talking to Pastor Tim Garino. He is uh, about to uh, shove off to the Ukraine once again, mm -hmm. as he did a couple of years ago. Pastor Tim, good morning to you. Good morning, and thanks for having me on. And it's great to be here this morning with all you guys. You got a good smile on your face, considering you're headed into this, uh, the land of some serious danger in the near future. Yes, uh, I, I'm. I'm excited. A uh, little, little nervous, a little stressed, but I'm excited. And uh, uh, you know, uh, it's it's next Tuesday. I take off and. Mm -hmm. uh, going to be over there in Ukraine, and, and a lot of neat things are going to take place. And um, uh, it, once you hit the ground, of course, things change. But uh, Are you allowed to say what your mission is there? Yeah, we're, we're going to – I'm going to be into um, – I'll, I'll arrive in Bucharest, and then from Bucharest go to Moldova, spend some time in Moldova with uh, uh, missionary friends of mine. They're, they're working on putting together um, a refugee uh, ministry program, shelter. Uh, a lot of refugees are coming into Moldova, women and children as we were talking about off the air earlier, um, and lots going on. And so I'll be part of that um, team in consulting and setting up where they are working on a house for some refugees. Uh, I'll be part of that, too, for a couple of days. And then I think it's on the 24th, 25th, a team will come in and take me into Ukraine, and we'll be in Ukraine. If you look at a map and you look at the line where the war is, you have a red line and a blue line, and they come together. Uh, that's where I'll be. I'll be on that line. Right on the front. Right, literally on that line. I'll be on that line, sometimes a little bit more red, sometimes <laughs> a little bit more blue. But we'll be on that line all the way from Odessa all the way up to the northeast corner. This brings you within two miles of conflict? In, in some areas, we'll be as close as two miles. Some areas, uh, as far as five miles. Um, so we'll be riding that line, uh, working in a lot of areas. I can't say the exact areas um, on the radio, but we'll be literally working in many of those areas, taking in um, medical supplies, food supplies, Water systems, repairing some water systems that have been damaged through shelling and rocketing. Um, we will be, um, in some areas, we'll be uh, in the midst of rockets will be coming in as we're there, um, especially the one area where we're going to. Um, it, it gets rocketed all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Um, you hit the ground. It usually takes a day to get used to the sounds of the rockets and then I I never want to say you get used to something like that that's not what I, I would ever say conditioned to you're conditioned it. your ner your nerves ain't jumpy you know when you when you when you when you're pulling in and you hear the first few pops and you could see the smoke and you could see you can feel the vibrations your body's shaking you're <laughs> You're moving, mm -hmm. your adrenaline kicks in, and you're like, hey, let's get out of here. Right. <laughs> it's like, why am I here? Let's go back. Um, but then you, little by little, it, it takes time. It takes time, and usually the first night or two, you don't get much sleep, but it takes time to get conditioned. It's not a good condition. It's just, um, but to stay focused, to do the job that, that we're going there to do, um, it, you got to stay focused. We go in with a small with a small team uh, to get stuff accomplished. Um, we we take we go in with vans. Um, it, it's a lot of time on the road. You're on the road a lot, um, so it's a lot of traveling, and uh, you don't get much sleep because you're there to do the job. And then you got to get re uh, then we got to come back into either Poland or, or Romania to get resupplied and then go back in. So uh, it's a lot of traveling, uh, very little sleep, not comfortable. Don't get that. Um, sleep in motels or anything like that sleep in vans sleep on the side of the road sleep in church basements um stuff like that so um uh, jacked up on a lot of uh, uh caught european coffee which is <laughs> <laughs> which is actually good i like it i like the european coffee so you're, you're jacked up pretty high i come back it usually takes me two or three days to come down from being jacked up on the coffee my wife just says go away <laughs> Stop flying all around the place. Well, let me ask you this. <laughs> is, is, this is the non-jacked-upon coffee version of you? Oh, trust me. This is the non-jacked-upon. <laughs> <laughs> My wife will just say, go out to the garden and do something. So, so this this is calm, sedate Tim Garino yeah, right this, now. This is calm, sedate. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. But, uh, it, and then I'll crash. And then and it hits me, and I'll crash mm -hmm. for two days um, and then get back up again. Hey, I want to ask you a question. Uh -huh. um, so you served in the U.S. Navy. Yes. And... Uh, you've seen many of the countries on the globe. Mm -hmm. If you throw a dart at one of them, you probably have been there. Yes. And you were telling me off air, because of your time mm -hmm. in the service, 
you have established a pretty good network of people around the world in missionary work. Yes, uh, a lot of the folks that I was in the service with uh, later on in my service time, um, I met a lot of folks uh, overseas and uh, stuff like that. And um, like like myself, many of them um, ended up converting to uh, Christianity, got saved, changed our lives, gave our life to the gospel. Um, because of the things we saw, the things that we did, uh, some of the guys I was in with, um, when they came out, they uh, took their lives, did drugs, did alcohol. Um, what saved me was, was making a decision and gave my life to Christ. And then I networked with other guys that did that. And through the years, they went on to be missionaries overseas. I stayed in the country and became a missionary in the country, working in rescue missions and churches and stuff like that, and networked. And throughout the years, I've traveled around the country. It's funny because... We don't see each other for five or ten years, and then all of a sudden I show up overseas, and they're like, "Hey," <laughs> and, and it's and and it's almost like we never left. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and I was seventeen when I was when I went in, twenty one, almost twenty two when I came out, and um, you, you you run into guys. I, I I sat last time I went overseas to Ukraine, I was in Vienna Airport, and I'm sitting there, and, and I was tired, and this guy walks up behind me, puts his hand on me, and says. Tim Garino and I look up and I said, Matt, I said, where you been? <laughs> we haven't seen each other in 30 years, but he, he actually just came from, uh, he came from Poland too. He was in Warsaw. He was at some of the refugee camps that I was at and we sat there and talked and it was like a reunion and we were mm -hmm. in the service together. And it, those kind of things are really neat. Um, have that network of people. Um, some of these guys were, um, uh, that I knew were in special groups. So they have a technique and stuff. So it, it's really exciting to to go over with guys like that. You know, they have your back. I have their back, and we're able to do stuff. Other folks I've met throughout the years, and we networked. And it's 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 weird that I can go leave leave this country and go to and just about any country in the world, and I have somebody that I know that's there that could come and get me or or find me within mm. a matter of hours and help me out if I needed that. It's weird. It's because I've been to so many different places, and people walk up to me and go, "I know you," <laughs> <laughs> and I look up and go, "Yeah, you do." <laughs> so it's a neat thing. But uh, I'm excited. I want to thank all the people that have donated to make this happen. Um, I I, um, I raised a, a good amount of money to be able to do two water supply systems. Medical aid is is desperately needed, so we're going to be taking a lot of medical aid tourniquets in. Um, Water supplies and and food are going to be taking in certain kinds of food um, that last long times. Uh, we're going to be able to take in. So a lot of neat things are taking place. Um, um, we're excited about that. And then a lot of things are still going on at the rescue mission. Uh, we're doing our second love uh, in a Martinsburg project at 407 Faulkner Avenue. That's being done in the last two weeks. We partner with Shepherd's University students and a bunch of volunteers. That's actually being done. They're painting the house all this week. We Last week, we scraped the house all last week. We're getting that done. The mission, uh, always stuff going on at the at the main rescue mission, Hope House in uh, Berkeley Springs. That is busy. You've got nine women up there. Uh, the Haven House with 604 Project, that's still full. Have you had lot. turnover, or is it the same people that have been there? We've had a couple, couple turnovers. We have a couple folks have moved on, um, some better situations, some not. Um but it's, it's always a challenge when you're dealing with families, broken families and stuff like that. School districts have been awesome. Uh, the principals have been awesome uh, in, in helping us get the kids all plugged in and stuff like that and, and keep them plugged in, keep them in school. When you're dealing with broken families, there's a lot of truancy and a lot of kind of stuff like that. So it kind of brings a normalcy. It brings some consistency to their life. So there's a lot of things we got to do. Uh, the main mission is doing real well. Our meals have, have gone up tremendously. So if anybody can donate, go online to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission org and hit that button and donate today, five, ten, twenty, whatever dollars you can donate. Um, it, we got hit hard in February on a lot of things, so we could de desperately need, need the donations. But I'm I'm excited for the trip and I'm excited for to represent Martinsburg again. When I went over the first time, everything was new to me, and uh, was able to represent Martinsburg and meet a lot of people. In fact, uh, Craig, who I'm um, who I'm going, who's going to pick me up 
uh, and then take me into the front lines, Craig Ludwig from Woodland, Texas. I met him just one day. Him and I spent one day together uh, in northern Ukraine, and um, we built a, a relationship, and I will be teaming up with him, and he's, he's the guy that uh, has all the connections on the front line that we're going to be on and, and do that kind of stuff. And he's excited. He's excited to connect with me because he saw what I did when I was over there. Because not and, 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 and what I'm about to say is, please, folks online, I'm not no hero. I'm not brave. I'm just stupid. And I love the Lord, and I go where the Lord tells me to go, okay? And um, the, not everybody goes to the front line. Not everybody goes, there's, a, there's like a, a boundary where certain people go up to and they stop. Give you an example. We were there, there were some British reporters and there were some other reporters from another thing when I was first there. And we were going to the front one day and they came to us and said, hey, we heard you guys were at the front yesterday. We, we, uh, we want to go in with you. And we said, okay, well, we're going in. And I, and I mentioned where we were going to and they're like, oh, well, we can't go in there. I said, what do you mean you can't go in there? I said, you're reporters. Well, we can go in there, but we're, we're afraid. We only want to go so far. So we took them. We took them as far as they wanted to go. They got out, and then they handed me their camera, and they said, could you take pictures for us? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at them, and I said, look, I don't want to be disrespectful. I said, but I got to do my job, mm -hmm. and I got to worry about because where we were going, we were being shelled and rocketed, and we got stuck in there for three days because we were rocketed seriously rocketed and i said look i'm not taking pictures because my job is going and 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 rescue people pull people out of buildings we, we got a bunch of stuff we got to do and i said and i'm not going to be standing there taking pictures and so uh just want to let you know not everybody goes to the front mm -hmm. and so it's a special kind of people that do that and i'm not special it's just that i i love the lord and i i i know it, you know I, if i die I don't want to die, but if I die, I know where I'm going. And the good Lord's going to take care of me. He's got to because nobody else wants me. <laughs> so, but, but, you know, I, it, it's just something that I do. And Craig is excited because uh, it is. When, when, and, and if anybody's ever been in combat and many soldiers out there, many sailors, many Marines, uh, airmen, you know when those first rockets start hitting, it makes a difference. You get somebody that's not been in that kind of situation, they panic, they fear. Fear takes over, and what fear can do to a man or a woman um, uh, are things that you don't want to be in. So, you know, uh, again, uh, I'm nothing special. It's just that that's what I do, and um, where we're going, not everybody goes. And, it, and we're bringing hope. We're bringing the gospel. Because when you see these people's faces light up, because when they see us come in, and especially when they see Americans, they light up because not many people come to the front like that. Not many people come with the kind of stuff they need, water systems, uh, tourniquets, supplies, like you were talking about earlier off the air with tourniquets and stuff. It's so important. When something happens, there's no hospital around. There's no urgent care. It's, it's hours away. And by the time they get them back to where they need to be, they're dead. Uh, they bleed out. Um, and if you ever had that happen to you, it's a horrible situation. It's not something to live with. Um, so those things happen when you're over there. Um, but it, but it, but there's good things. You get to meet people. You, you see people. They're appreciative what you're bringing them. Um, they're very resourceful. Everything we, even the machine we got to take apart. They're not going to waste any parts. They'll keep all those parts. They'll do something with them. They'll put them because there's nothing at the front. It's all destroyed. Uh, buildings are coming down. Uh, it, it's a very, it was a very beautiful, beautiful country. That stuff can never be restored. That stuff was built centuries ago. Those buildings can never be rebuilt like they were. So you see de devastation, but you see when people see it coming like that, they see, you can see in their eyes, they, there's hope. Uh, despair goes away. Uh, neat little things, but I'll stop if you have a question. I'm sorry. No, man. Okay. All right. This is powerful. Yeah. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. I, I was just going to ask, is is the mission this go-around similar or the very same as the first time you went in, or are there some differences? Uh, there's going to be some differences. Um, we're going to spend a lot more time at the front. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to spend some time at, at, at some places that are very um, intense. Mm -hmm. um, the first time around, we only went so far because the, the troops were moving. Um, this is more intense because there's drones. When I was there, there was no drones the first time. 
there's drones. So there's more intensity with drones. There's more intensity. Now they're just throwing rockets up. They're, 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 they're throwing them up as fast as they can get them up, and they're dropping them everywhere. They're, they're, before they were more precise in the targets they were hitting, now they don't care what they hit. They, they're hitting more and more civilians, more and more places where people live. You know, it used to be more military targets. Now it's we're just going to scorch the earth. Um, so it, 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 it's more intense because you don't know what's coming and when it's coming. And, 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 and when it does come, <laughs> this fat guy ain't going to be able to move too fast. <laughs> Duck and cover. Duck and cover. What type of reports are you getting as far as the people? Obviously, you know, to, to just bombard with rockets is trying to break the will of the people. Yeah. What's the reports that you're getting as far as the people that you'll be going and working with and serving with and their will to keep fighting in the midst of this now two years old. And and just what you just said, Matt, they have the will to keep fighting. It's their country, it's their home. Um, yes, they're discouraged, but they have the will to fight. They have the will to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, they they have the spirit. Um, they love when, like, when, when we come in, especially ministers, to pray with them. We have fellowship yeah. with them. We study the Bible with them. We read to them. Mm -hmm. They love that. That's encouragement to them um, because they know their physical world is, is destroyed around them. And it's yeah. the spiritual world that really builds them up and gives them that fire in their belly. It gives them that fire in their heart. And it also reminds them, just like I said, and, I, and I'm not trying to sound uh, – uh, I, I don't know what the word is. I'm not good at words, but uh, I'm not trying to sign, sound arrogant or anything, but these folks understand, uh, especially those that love Jesus, they understand if they die, they know where they're going. Mm. And that makes a difference when you're fighting a fight that you know you're overwhelmed, you're outmatched, um, you're, you're beaten down every day, uh, it's dreary. Uh, one of the things, the difference between North Ukraine and southern Ukraine, uh, there, it's a difference in temperatures, a difference in weather, it's a difference in scenery. Mm -hmm. The further north you get, it's very dreary, it's very rainy, especially this time of the year. But you go south, it gets warm, it's sunshine. So the, the heavy fighting, if you look at that red line, is further like northeast and when we get up in that area um you know it, it's it's like living in seattle it's constantly raining dreary uh cloudy it, it, it and you put that on top and then we come in and we bring that spirit of 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 not fear of love we bring the spirit of of and, and anything can be possible and so uh we come in with the gospel we share that um you know um fact some of the people that i was with two years ago they are dead they were killed, hmm. and I won't see them this time around. They didn't make it. So I'll get to uh, maybe talk to some of the family members, maybe. I know one of the family members is still in the one area that we're going to go see, so I'll get to see his mother, but um, he's not there. He's gone. He's with the Lord. So, you know, those are the kind of things that you, you're going to see. And then as Rob and I were talking off air earlier, I uh, talked about a guy in Vienna. Um, you know the the orphans, the widows. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, mm -hmm. and and it's and and it's and it's so overwhelming that you could either get caught up in it and and let it bring you down, or I go in and I go I go in with a lot of energy. I wear these bright shirts. Uh, I'll go in with my uh, WVU uh, West Virginia sweatshirts and bright yellow. And they'll say West Virginia, and they'll always call me Virginia. And I'll say no, West Virginia. <laughs> and they'll say, and and they'll say, what is the difference? I say West Virginia is where the 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 fighters and the real people are from. The Virginia, those are people that are scared and afraid. Don't get upset with me now. And so I, I tell them, I say we're the I say we're the fighters and we're the you know, and they just laugh and we have fun and lift them up and and encourage them and i'll pray with them i'll get them together and and uh, the men will come the soldiers will come and we'll mm -hmm. pray and we're down in these trenches like world war ii and world war one we're in these mm -hmm. trenches and that's what's so real to me you pull up and you look to the side of the road and there's trenches like world war one world war two and you get down mm -hmm. in the trenches and you're literally in the ground walking in these trenches and you're looking up and and they have the sandbags and everything and i'm like this is like a movie set, mm -hmm. but it's real war. Because when that rocket comes in, you go, oh, we're not on a movie set. It's real. <laughs> and it's and it's just so surreal. I'll get together, and they'll come over to me, and many have broken English. And one guy I met, from he went to school in Virginia Tech. 
You know, he's he comes over. Oh, Virginia, Virginia. I'm like, West Virginia. <laughs> and he's that's right, that's right, that's right. And we and, and I'll get together and I pray with them. They'll come around, they hug me, and then of course when when we're done, with they they hug and we pray, and they'll say they'll say, give us the word, give us the word, and I'll give them a good scripture verse and mm-hmm. say, let's keep going. And then they'll say to me, um, you know, I lost my brother or, or I lost my father. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen my wife and kids or my mother or my sister. I've been here and they're scared. Yeah. They're scared. They're mm-hmm. fearful. But, you know, you get in there and you pump them up. You have fun. Some of them are depressed. They mm-hmm. come. Their, their tears mm-hmm. are coming down their eyes as they're telling you their stories. And, and it can get overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I, I have to pull back. Um, that's why like I called you guys that one time it's therapeutic for me to call back and just let it out and tell you guys what's going on and neat stuff um, it, 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 it is and again I'm not no hero or anything like that it's just um, I, I have a long time ago I've been in a lot of war zones I, I um, it's just my thing mm-hmm. you know uh, people say why do you work at rescue missions because I fit in I, I, I it's God called me to do those kind of things mm-hmm. I, I, I've been a church pastor, don't want to be a church pastor, because <laughs> that's a lot of politics, and God bless you church pastors out there. But what, but what I do is, um, you know, you're dealing with people in crisis, serious mm-hmm. crisis, either here where they're homeless, dealing with drug overdoses, dealing with homelessness, kids, all that kind of stuff, and over there, same thing. Yeah. It's a crisis, yeah. and, and it's a crisis brought on, as we were talking about earlier, you know, it's almost like the human race wants to constantly be at war and kill each other, yeah. you yeah. know, over stupid things, yeah. Yeah. stupid stuff. But no. uh, I'll share with you, that's where the unity of Christ yeah. <clears throat> comes in. Two weeks ago, um, yeah. Fellowship of Christian Athletes had our an, biannual convention. Every couple of years, staff from around the world get together. And it was two years ago during that convention that uh, Putin, yeah. uh, you know, said, hey, we're attacking. And that war began. And there were uh, FCA representatives from their countries ukraine and russia together at this gathering and they gathered around the russian representative and here's ukrainian men and women praying over this man for his family and his country and all that's going on you know the unity that was there even in the midst of of what was beginning and hard to believe that that was two years ago now yeah and 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 you see that and that's i mean that's why i'm excited to get back and see the people of course, it's going to be sad because there are going to be some people that are not going to be there because of the war. They're dead. Um, but it's going to be neat to see those folks, to inject what I can uh, of, a, of, of the Spirit of God in them, encourage them. They always laugh because I get up early. I'm, I'm jacked up. I'm flying around. Um, I don't let things bother me. I jump right in, you know. Um, they always tell me to stay away from the weapons. They say, <laughs> stay away from the weapons. You're too jacked up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Did they ever take your coffee? No more European coffee no, for you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and uh, the one guy I drive with, my driver, he drinks the Red Bull because he, 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 we, we stop. He'll, he gets cases of Red Bull and sticks it in the back of the thing, and I reach back and get him another Red Bull, and he, he's drinking. My, he's always like, you want one? No, that stuff tears up my esophagus. I can't do that Red Bull stuff. <laughs> hey, Buddy. Quick, quick question yeah. from John before yeah, go we uh, yeah, go ahead. say goodbye. The, yeah. um, there's a lot of international stuff going on trying to get the Ukrainians to um, to surrender. I mean, the the Pope said something basically this past week. You know, have the courage to to end it. Have the courage to to throw up the white flag. Basically, what what do you think? I mean, you know, Ukrainians. What what is the feeling? Um, I don't know. If the term surrender is what they want. They want peace. They want the war to end. I mean, any any Ukrainian that I have met and talked to in Ukraine, in the war zone especially, they just want the war to come to an end. Um, so how does that mean, come to an end? I don't know. Uh, honestly, I, in their minds, surrender is not what they're looking for, but in their minds, they're tired of war. Right. They're tired of the suffering. They're tired of the, of the loss of family. They're tired of loss of, of everything. I mean, uh, for most of these people, they're totally devastated. Uh, many of them are struggling. I know my daughter just recently told me there's a bunch of uh, uh, Ukrainians that came in from Odessa and they came into Martinsburg area, Berkeley County area. And uh, Odessa at one time, if you know anything about Odessa, w- is on the waterfront. It was considered a big ocean, like be like Ocean City, Maryland. Everybody went there. That was the place you went. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that place has, has been destroyed. It's been mm-hmm. rocketed. It's been decimated. Um, it's not the 
It's not the uh, elite place to go to anymore. It's part of the war zone. So um, to answer that question, I, I don't think the word is surrender. They just want the war to stop and they want peace. And like you were talking about the prayer, the unity, because mm -hmm. not every Russian is for this war either. Right. And, and that's yeah. the, the mistake of, of people thinking every Russian is, is evil. Uh, there's a lot of Russians that, that I met um, will tell you straight up, they, are, they, have not, they want nothing to do with Putin or the war. But what are they going to do? They'll end up going to jail if they speak out against it. Dissent, or, dissent is not tolerated. Yeah. <laughs> or, or worse. Yeah, or worse. They disappear. <laughs> uh, Pastor Tim, we're yeah. just about out of time. Sure. Uh, a couple of things to wrap it up. First and foremost, can anybody do anything to help you with your trip to Ukraine? Sure, just a lot of prayer for safety and, and pathways to be open, doors to be open for us to get the equipment there and, and the stuff that's needed. A lot of prayers there. If anybody wants to donate, they go online, Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, uh, hit the donate button, put Ukraine trip. Uh, if they want to donate to the rescue mission for the food here and supplies here, that the thousands of people we serve every day here, please do. Same thing, hit the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, hit the donate button, donate today. And again, thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you for your support. And I will be in contact when I'm over there. I'll, yeah. get, I'll, I'll email you and then we'll talk. Love to. Yep. Yeah. Stay like, safe. Yep. Thank you. It's 833.